Hello YouTube, Downtown Prepper here. And I was wanting to put a quick video together as a reminder, perhaps a call to action for others, to uh, stay social in their community. Uh, to remember to network amongst friends and family, coworkers, in order so that you can acquire supplies that you might not be able to get on your own. Another reason might be that those might be avenues, uh, socially socializing, networking, they might be avenues to getting things at the cheapest price possible. And you might be need help at doing that. <clears throat> it's December 9th, 2013. Um, and for the most part, the so-called ammo crisis is over. But if you walk into any Walmart, at least when I walk into any Walmart here in Indianapolis, it is impossible to find 762 rounds. It, excuse me. And it is impossible to find 9mm ammo still. I mean, I just can't find it anywhere. So what I have done, um, kind of to help myself out, is um, I made a kind of a deal with a few buddies, a few coworkers. One of them in particular has a AR platform. A few of them have AR platforms. And the deal that we worked out is that we go to the store, we go to Walmart, Myers, um, and we see we don't see any of the ammo that we shoot in our platform, but we see five. Uh, but we see ammo that our buddies need. We'll go ahead and pick up our three box limit, bring it to work the next day, and get the cash. I mean, all of this Tula ammo right here is what I have uh, acquired recently uh, to do this method. And um, another example is that 9mm ammo right there. How acquired that is uh, another buddy shoots nothing but 1911s. So when he goes to the store and can't find any 45 ammo, which is pretty much always, he'll go ahead and pick me up uh, some 9mm Luger. I have a Glock 17. And this... Taurus PT-92. Which I love. It's an awesome gun. check it for you all but I can't find any 9mm ammo anywhere to you know to save my life but in the particular place where he lives he seems to have no problem finding it so I tell him every time he goes out if you find some buy it for me then we work together you don't want to make enemies through this process do this with people that you trust you know you don't want to have people owing you money Another example is Gander Mountains on Fridays. If you are lucky enough to get there about 45 minutes before the doors open, they'll have 22 ammo. And it's not there very long because you have gougers out there that will buy up all the boxes and then charge you double where they're actually worth. Believe it or not, believe it or not, I only paid $25 for this box of 22 ammo. Did not pay a ridiculous price of $60, $70, or even $80 some people are charging. On a side note, I do want to add, Gander Mountain has done an excellent job of raping the gun community through this whole quote-end-quote gun crisis. Completely bloated the prices just out of the water. And personally, I don't shop there, but again... My buddy's gonna go there and pick up some ammo. Might as well pick some up. Might as well buy some off of him. Honestly, it's the only place that it's available at retail, though, that I've seen or have heard of. So, just uh, around here at least. I wanna. It's Indianapolis, Indiana. So, it's one thing to note. So, without making a huge sacrifice for your friends, you can really help out your buddies. I mean, ammo is one thing you definitely need to. I, in my opinion, one thing you should definitely stock up on if you are a prepper. Additionally, 
on another moving on is magazines buying things online is a great way to use your social network for example these taco magazines 30 round taco magazines for AK-47s slash AKN platforms um, they're from seven to eight dollars on Gunbroker. On Gunbroker, I'm sorry. Uh, cheaper than dirt. Gosh, who knows how much they're on Gunbroker? Fifty dollars, ridiculous amounts. Um, but at cheaper than dirt, they're from six fifty, six seventy five to eight bucks. Now, when you include shipping with it, you buy one of these, it, it's about eight dollars shipping. But if you buy two of them, it only goes up to about eight fifty. So what me and a few friends did is we bought about 30 of them, split it up, split them up, and um, I kept about eight of them. And we all split the shipping three ways. It ended up being about $8 a magazine that way. Great price. I mean, sick killer price. Picked them up on Black Friday. They were a little bit cheaper on Black Friday. Another way, you know, networking can help you because, you know, buying anything online, they'll get you on the shipping. And if you buy, go to a website with free shipping, well, these things are already $2 more. So, might as well help each other out. Again, these aren't any good with this. So, if you're stocking up on ammo, get some freaking magazines. I mean, some people say you shouldn't hold your ammo in magazines. Other people say um, it's not the compression of the magazine that wears them out, but the compression and decompression over and over again that wears them out. So a lot of people keep their um, ammo in magazines. I do, at least, as well. Another way you can stay social, networking can be helpful, is everybody has that crazy aunt that goes to yard sales. Well, I have one as well. She goes every weekend, and recently I asked her, if she sees anything, any, oh, there you go, Martin. Oh man, it's fucking up all over the place. If she, I was asking her if she saw any tools, fishing gear, knives, axes, what have you, to go ahead and buy them for me. And this is what she picked up last time she went. I had completely forgotten that I had asked her to do this for me. And. I asked her how much I ordered. See, she said eight dollars. I was like, "Well, heck, yes." Starting off with a little fishing kit. You can tell there's a lot of slots missing, but let's dive in. A lot of these hooks all tangled up. I mean, definitely, you can tell these came from yard sale. These are all tangled up. But this is some um, hooks, smaller hooks, more realistic to what I'm actually going to catch. About two dozen more hooks. I mean, I bought these on sale and hooks are about 80 cents to $1.50 for six of them. A little bit of a, some more lures and such, some bobbers, so I mean, definitely not pretty, definitely not clean, some swivels in there, but you know what? You can butcher this and pull out what you need and put it in your survival kit, money. I mean, for a dollar, I think she paid for that. I think she had to pay a couple bucks for these, but some Brunton Light Tech uh, 10 by 28. I mean, come on, $2 for, some, for a pair of binoculars? Why not? I didn't have any, now I do. I think she paid a couple bucks for this, but this is a $15 box of Drywall screws, pretty much full. I mean, they don't come full to the top to begin with. I mean, WD-40 and a survival mess kit, a little Swiss Army knife mess kit. I mean, little utensil kit thing. Splits apart. Now, I've had these in the past, and I have taken them hiking in the past, and my overall review is that they're hard to clean, they're heavy, and you're already carrying a knife. I have a military, you know, it's just, they're, they're just too cumbersome. I mean, really, when you start hiking and hiking long distances, you'll realize that you get a spork 
would be, I mean, that's all you need. That's what you'll take. A spork is what I recommend, but still. I mean, this is a cool little gadget. Another knife to throw in the pile. Eight dollars for all that stuff. Cam WD-40 is two bucks. These binoculars are probably at least ten, fifteen dollars, not more. So I mean, I've already doubled what I paid for it. Not to mention a sustainable food source. Another way networking has been beneficial for me. Finally, I know you see this uh, 50 pound bag of sack of beans. I was in a, one of my favorite Mexican restaurants a couple weekends ago. Oh, excuse me. Swiss Army knife. Forgot that. A real Swiss Army knife. Old, but it looks like somebody got it, paid, bought it, threw it in the box, and forgot about it. Because that blade is perfect. So, awesome. Of course, the toothpick and the tweezers are missing, but who has a Swiss Army knife for those salon? Anyways. So my favorite Mexican restaurant last weekend, and I've been going there for years. Sometimes I eat there every day on lunch. So I've become pretty good friends with the owner. It was just me, him, and a couple other tables. My lunch time is a little bit after everybody else's. And I got to, he was asking me about my family, small talking a little bit. He's a talker, I'm a talker, so we always just shoot the shit. And I got to asking him how much he pays for his uh, sacks of beans. And he asked me why, and I go, well, I'm starting to stock up for a rainy day. And at first he gave me a weird look, but then he really rolled with it. I mean, he's from a small town in Mexico in the late 50s, so his uh, childhood growing up was a daily rainy day. You know, so it, it, the daily exist existence was pretty rough. So to have two or three of these in the grain closet meant life. So he totally rolled with the idea. He totally understood what I was talking about. And I told him, we started talking to him a little bit about prepping and it was, a, it was funny to him because that's what they did growing up. They would uh, prep for the winter, essentially, for the in-between harvest seasons. So he knew all about it. Give me a couple tips about how to store food. I told him about Mylar bags and he had never heard of those, but regardless, he had told me, I got to asking him how much he, you know, paid for the bag of beans. He said he negotiated the price down from 30 something dollars to 26 and change, which I thought was awesome. I mean, that's, that's just a little over 50 cents a pound, which is cheaper than I've found it anywhere. To give you an idea of the calories that I bought, for $27, excuse me, let me get it to focus. Let's see, 630 servings, 60 calories per serving. I'll go down the chart here. Give you tons of fiber, obviously tons of protein, a little bit of vitamins. So definitely have to be supplemented. So there you go. For $27, I mean, so basically, Final thoughts, you know, is prepping is expensive. It's prepping is very, very expensive. All this stuff costs, costs a lot of money. Ammo costs a ton of money, you know. Food isn't cheap either. Stocking up on food, it costs a ton of money. So that's, I mean, that's why I decided, and that's one, my main reason to why I started socializing, networking, is to save a buck, save as much money as I could. I got tired of spending $8 for a box of Tula ammo on arms list or gun broker. Uh, when I first got my rifle, I actually paid $60 for a box of 22 and it was the cheapest ones online. So I mean, forming a network, helping your friends out, saving a dollar here, saving a dollar there, definitely adds up. I want to stress that you do not want to ruin your quality of life by being a prepper. A lot of people out there have families. You don't want to ruin their quality of life because you are a prepper. You don't want to spend every single dollar you have on things for the future and not have anything for now. So I mean really, it's a good way of helping you out there too. So remember, socialize, network, get in your community. This has been Downtown Prepper. Thank you for watching.
Bye-bye.